Hello everyone and welcome to Unbound Learners Pre-K. How are you feeling today? You can show me with a thumbs up if you're feeling great. You can show me with a thumb in the middle if you're feeling okay. And if you're not feeling that great, you can show me with a thumbs down. But hopefully after circle time, you'll be feeling better. Today I'm feeling great. Are you ready to get started with our good morning song together? Let's stretch our arms out like airplane wings. Fly your airplane to one side. Fly your airplane to the other side. Fly your airplane to the middle. And we look like the letter T when we raise our arms out like this. Now bring those airplane wings into a big circle out in front of you like this. Stretch your arms over your head. Give a little stretch to one side. Stretch over to the other side and one last stretch up at the top before we bring our arms back down. Will you sing with me? Good morning, dear earth. Good morning, dear sun. Good morning, dear rocks and flowers, everyone. Good morning, dear beast and birds in the trees. Good morning to you and good morning to me. Good morning, friends. I hope you're having a wonderful day so far. So before we get started with our calendar and weather chart, there are three things that we have to do. First, let's turn on our listening ears. The second thing that we need to do is put on our thinking hats. So take a look around. Can you find yours? My thinking hat is right here. And today, I'm going to tie a bow to fasten my thinking hat. And the third and final thing that we need to do is warm up our hearts like this. Boom, 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 boom. And now we can move on to the calendar and weather chart. And the first thing that we need to do is go over the date. When we see the date, we start off with the month. Do you remember what the month is? April, that's right. And today is April 14th. So let's move the chip over from yesterday. Yesterday was April 13th and today is April 14th. And right up here, we have the year. There are two ways to say the year, 2021 or 2021. Both ways are correct. Will you say the date with me one more time? Today is April 14th, 2021 or 2021. Now we need to count all of the days that we've had so far in the month of April. So get those counting fingers ready and give them a little stretch to warm them up. Let's start off with the number one up at the top. One, two, three, Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. We have had fourteen days so far in the month of April. Now it's time to sing the weather song together. So can you show me how many fingers we need to hold up for this next song? Seven. That's right because we have seven days in the week. The song goes like this. There are seven days, there are seven days, there are seven days in a week. Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. When we travel down to the bottom of the chart, this says that yesterday was, here's your clue. Tuesday. Yesterday was Tuesday. So that means that today is what? Wednesday. Today is Wednesday. And tomorrow will be th Thursday. Tomorrow will be Thursday. But let's go back to today and let's sing Today is Wednesday together. Are you ready? Today is Wednesday, today is Wednesday, today is Wednesday, all day long. Today is Wednesday, today is Wednesday, today is Wednesday, 
all day long. Let's travel back up to the top where we can find the season. Do you know what the season is? Spring, that's right friends, it's springtime. And it definitely feels and looks like springtime outside at my house. Look at the picture down here. This means that it's time to sing the weather song together. What's the weather, what's the weather? Can you tell, can you tell? Is the sun shining, is the rain falling? Can you tell? Can you tell? Look at this. It's another rainy day where I live. When I look outside of my window, the sky is dark and gray. It's full of nimbostratus clouds, and those clouds have rain falling from them. But my temperature chart is still on orange. It's still warm where I live. It's pretty warm and rainy today. So there's a popular saying that goes, April showers bring May flowers. During the month of April, it can be especially rainy, but hopefully that will lead to many flowers in the month of May. What's the weather like where you live, friends? Look out your window and let me know what you see. Thanks for sharing the weather with me. And now let's move on to the letter, the number, and the sign of the week. This letter makes two sounds. Can you make the short sound with me? Eh, eh. And what about the long sound? E. This is a lowercase letter. Do you know what lowercase letter this is? E. That's right, friends. This is a lowercase e. And e says eh or e. Are you ready to guess what's inside of the letter box? Inside of this box, I have something that starts with the letter E, but it makes the short sound, eh. Here's your first clue. This is something that you would find inside of a nest. On the outside is a hard shell, and this is very fragile. Do you have any guesses? Let's take a look and see. An egg. Egg starts with the letter E. Uh, e. An egg would be found in a nest, and on the outside it has a hard shell, and it's very, very fragile. You wouldn't want it to break. This is how you write a lowercase e. Uh, e. One more time. Now let's move on to the number of the week. Here we have a double digit number. Do you know what number this is? 19, that's right. So first, when you write the number 19, you write this number. Can you show me with your finger what number this is? One, and after you write the number one, you have to write this number. Will you show me with your fingers what number this is? Nine, 19. I'm going to grab my piece of chalk so that we can count 19 tally marks together. Are you ready? One, two, three, four, Five goes across, six, seven, eight, nine, ten goes across, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen goes across, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, and one more makes nineteen. Nineteen tally marks. And when I open up the box, Let's see what I have to count today. I have a bunch of these small rocks. Do you remember what a small rock is called? A pebble, that's right. 
So let's count 19 pebbles together. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, and one more makes 19. 19 pebbles. And I just noticed something, friends. When I look at these pebbles, this pebble, specifically the shape of it, reminds me of an egg. They have a similar shape. Okay, friends, it's time to go over the sign of the week. This week, we learned how to say animal in sign language, like this. Will you say animal with me? Animal. Let's continue our discussion on baby animals that are born in the springtime. Today's baby animal is called a chick. Do you know what a chick is? A chick is a baby chicken. So male chickens are called roosters and female chickens are called hens. And hens lay eggs all year round. Now, depending on the breed of the hen, a chick may hatch from a green egg or even a blue or pink egg. It takes the chick about three months to hatch from the egg. And during this time, the mother hen will sit in her nest on top of the eggs to keep them warm. When the chick does hatch from the egg, it's extremely sensitive to temperature. And that's why warmer springtime temperatures are best for a chick. Last year, we raised eight chicks, and now those chicks are hens who lay their own eggs. Are you ready to see today's work? Let's go check it out. For today's work, you will need a stick, some yarn or twine, a pair of scissors, an egg carton, and some paint or watercolor. So the first thing that you need to do requires a little bit of preparation for this activity. Today we're going to make a mobile. And in order to prep the mobile, you can ask a grown-up to help you with this part. So you have the base or the bottom of an egg carton, and I'm just going to cut out each section with my pair of scissors. So there are 12 individual sections, and you're going to cut each one out. And once you have them separated like this, you can see that it kind of resembles a flower with the petals right here. So if you just cut some additional slits into the carton like this and kind of just fold it out, it looks like a flower petal. So I went ahead and I cut all of the 12 sections out and then I just cut the slits in each one to make the petals. And then I had my son paint them. So you can use watercolors or paint, it's completely up to you. So we let them dry and this is what the final product looked like. So you can see that we have 12 individual pieces and they have little petals like this. Sometimes he painted the inside, sometimes he painted the outside, sometimes both. So it's completely up to you how you would like to design the little flowers. Now the next step also requires a little help from a grown-up. So you're going to poke a hole into the bottom part of each section like this. This is where the yarn or the twine is going to go through. And definitely make sure that you have a grown-up help you with this because this can be a little bit tricky and you just want to make sure that you're staying safe with the scissors. So poke a hole in each of the 12 sections.
Okay, so we have 12 little holes poked in each section. And the next thing to do is to take your yarn or your twine. Um, I used yarn and I am using four pieces of yarn. I'm thinking that I'm going to have three little egg cartons per piece of yarn. And I cut the yarn to be a little bit over two feet but the length is completely up to you. So before I attach the pieces of yarn to the actual stick, I'm first going to assemble each piece of yarn with the egg carton. So I'm going to take the yarn and just poke it through the little hole and here it comes out the other end. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to tie a little knot right below where I would like the egg carton to sit, just to hold it in place. So I tied a little knot right there. And that way it will keep the egg carton from falling off. So pull it right down so it will sit like this. And I'm just going to go ahead and add two more egg cartons to this piece of yarn. But before I add the next one, I'm going to tie a knot right below where I want the second egg carton to sit. And again, you can have a grown up help you with this part. Um, you can have them tie the little knot for you and then you can string the egg carton through yourself. You can show them where you would like each egg carton to go. So I'm just gonna go ahead and thread the next one through. And this one actually went right through that knot. So that shows me that I'm going to add a few more knots on top, make it a little bit thicker. That hole must have been wide so it was able to go right through. So if that happens, just add a thicker knot to hold that egg carton in place. One more just to be safe. Sometimes, as you can see, I have a long piece of yarn, so it's getting a little bit knotted like that. Okay, let's try that again. Oh, and look at it. There's a little pebble that's stuck to the egg carton. It must have dried while the paint was drying. There we go, that one stays on. And let's try the last one. So, Tie a little knot where you want it to stay, and this time I'll make sure to tie two or three knots. One last one. Okay, and last one for this piece of yarn. Sometimes you may notice that as you are threading the yarn or twine through, it may be a little bit hard to get it through the cardboard, so a pair of tweezers may help. And look at this. We have one, two, three egg cartons on this one piece of string. And I'm just going to go ahead and move on to the other three pieces of yarn and attach three egg cartons per piece of yarn. Okay, and we are about to attach the final egg carton. Now, this piece of yarn is only going to have 
two egg cartons on it. Initially, I thought each one would have three, but I remember yesterday when my son was painting these, he got very upset because his younger brother ripped one of them. So that must be the missing egg carton. And that's why we're using 11 of them today as opposed to 12. So let's put this final egg carton on. This is a great activity for fine motor skills because it really requires you to use these small muscles in your little fingers to bring the yarn through. And it's also a really great activity in terms of reusing materials before they end up in the recycling bin. Okay, so we have one, two, three, and four pieces of yarn, each with the egg cartons on. Now, the last step is to attach the top of each yarn to the stick. This is where it's going to hang from. So I'm just going to make a little loop and tie a little knot to the string like this. So here's one, get this one out of the way so that it's not tangled with the others. And so we had green, let's see, maybe I'll do a purple one next. Tie the purple yarn to the top of the stick. I think one of the most complicated parts of this work is going to be to find a place for this to hang. I know that my son is going to have a lot of fun deciding where he wants to put his final product. Okay, one last knot and the last piece of yarn. And there we go. So as this hangs, friends, what you're going to want to do is put one final piece of string at the top of the mobile, and that way you could decide a place in your house or maybe even outside to hang it. Let's get back to circle time. Welcome back to circle time, friends. Have you ever held a chick before? What do you think it would feel like? Thanks for learning with me today. If you haven't already, please subscribe to my channel, give this video a big thumbs up, and find me on OutSchool for my live and interactive classes. You can also support my channel by checking out my Patreon page and gain access to bonus features for your child. Before we go, we have one last song to sing. Can everybody wave goodbye like this? Goodbye, friends. Goodbye, friends. Goodbye, friends. I'll see you next time. Thanks for learning with me today. I hope you all have a wonderful day and I'll see you tomorrow.